All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual college exploration for Illinois students sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Just a little uh, few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button at the top or bottom of your screen to type questions to any of our presenters during this presentation. Your camera and microphone are off. We are in webinar mode, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So again, please make sure you use that Q&A button, the Q&A feature. And then this is just one of um, additional sessions that are happening the rest of this week and next week. So if you're interested, please go to IACAC.org for a list of all of the sessions. And then lastly, this session is being recorded. You can access this recording within about a week on the IACAC website. So if you'd like to share this information with anyone, please feel free to do that. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. So have an awesome presentation. Hi, I'm Tiffany Dallas with Colorado State University. Give me one second. I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so today I am with some dearest, uh, most esteemed colleagues of um, the Chicago area regional representatives. So we're all members, we all live here, we all eat here, <clears throat> we all admit students from our respective states. Um, and we're here to talk about um, basically for in, in this time of COVID, we've all been spending a lot more time outside. And I personally have found how much I love, absolutely love and need to be outside um, you know, during this time especially. So Sarah and Ray, do you both want to introduce yourself while I get this going? Definitely. Um, so hi guys, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Sarah McLean Nelson. I'm with uh, Northern Michigan University. I'm also like, you know, Tiffany said, based in the Chicago area. And um, I am happy that you guys are able to uh, join us and listen to our great presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Ray, uh, originally from Chicago, a city rat, uh, and of course, looking forward to this presentation. So, Tiffany, are we ready to go? All right, I'm ready to go. Sorry, technology is not my thing sometimes. So there's more than 4,600 colleges and universities across the country. Choosing one out of 4,600 is such an overwhelming process. Um, but for again, for those of you who know that you love to be outside, what an advantage you already have. <laughs> um, so the three of us partnered together. I've been to all of our campuses. I've been to all of our towns. Um, and I think they're all amazing places. Uh, but of course, I'm here to talk about Colorado State. <clears throat> Oh, first, I, this is just a quote that I just like speaks to my heart. Into, into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. Um, especially during times of COVID where it's just a little bit crazy. The world is so loud and you have to try to avoid people. But nature, you know, everything just kind of disappears. So uh, Colorado State, this is me. This is my contact information. Um, we have an epic location. We're located an hour north of Denver along the front range of the Colorado Rockies. So everything west of us is mountains, <laughs> as you can see. So this is a picture I actually took. This isn't photography. This I, I'm not a photographer unless it's my children, of course. Um, but this is just, it's that beautiful. I woke up and I watched the sunrise over the mountains. So if you want to talk about <laughs> the need and the desire to be outside, um, our location, as any location that an outdoor enthusiast is drawn to, should it include lots of outdoor recreation activities. So the weather, I have to talk about the weather quickly just because it's so epic. <laughs> so in Colorado, they actually do not um, get the extreme cold temperatures that we get here in Illinois. So a lot of times students see snow, so you assume that it's cold. It was actually like 30 degrees on this particular morning. <clears throat> so uh, it's a lot chillier here in Illinois than it is in Colorado. Also in the summer, there's no bugs because there's really no humidity, at least in comparison to what we have in Illinois. Um, so the climate is just so much more enjoyable and it really lends itself to be outside. So the city of Fort Collins, well, the state of Colorado is 300 days of sunshine. Growing up in the Northwest suburbs, I thought it was normal, you know, to spend winter with, you know, a gray sky, gray ground. No, it's not normal. <laughs> There's places with sunshine pretty much every day. 
It's the third happiest and healthiest city in America. It's one of the top 10 college towns to live in forever. We were actually just named the number one most desirable city to live in in the entire United States. So the city of Fort Collins is just really a cool place. So outdoors, everything surrounding us is mountains, wildlife land. So it's 285 miles of bike lanes, hiking trails, nature paths, anything to get our students outside exploring. Uh, the Poudre River runs right through our town. So it's like whitewater rafting capital. Some of our students enjoy um, float trips down the river. Of course, there's a horse tooth reservoir, which is this. Um, so stand up um, paddle boarding, kayaking, that sort of thing. We're an hour from the Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, so, you know, the location where you're going is really going to set the backdrop for someone who likes to be outside. So a little bit about outdoors in the classroom and, and what is someone who really likes to be outside might want to look for in the classroom. Um, green space. So we were founded 150 years ago by four farmers. They gave us land and they said we had to maintain green space. So the entire center of our campus is actually all open. It's all green <clears throat> and there's a lot of trees. So our total campus sprawls about 8,500 acres. Uh, so a lot of that is research plots, um, huge agricultural program. We were founded as Colorado A&M, so lots of farmland. Um, but my personal favorite thing for students who like to be outside is we have the mountain campus. So the mountain campus is the picture on the right. Um, it's a 1200 acre campus in the mountains. Um, we have a lot of green walls at CSU. So actually, Nate, we're the first university in the entire world to obtain a STARS Platinum Ranking for Sustainability. So green walls are actually a common place at CSU inside of our buildings. Another really cool feature that we have at CSU is we have the Warner College of Natural Resources. Um, and they, the top floor, the, the classroom's actually open. And so you're like sitting in the trees studying. So that's super cool. Um, the city itself is a platinum bicycle city. The campus is also a platinum bicycle campus. So what does that mean? It means there's a lot of bicycles on our campus. At any given time, we have 20,000 bikes coming on and off campus. Study abroad. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. So when you go abroad, it's also outside, right? It's outside seeing the world. Um, so we're the international host for semester at sea. So students can get on this massive cruise boat and they sail the world. They port in four continents, 15 cities, 12 countries in the course of one semester. Um, so there's that, but then we also have opportunities in all seven continents, more than a thousand different locations. Um, <coughs> student life, this is something else that students should be thinking about. Anything that you do at high school, you're able to do at the collegiate level on a much larger scale. So we have 500 student organizations on our, on our campus. Um, the two largest are the Snow Riders and the Outdoor Club. So they each have about a thousand students in each. We have the Trail Riders. So they go into the mountains and go horseback riding. Everything related to the equine industry. There's a rodeo club, a bass fishing club, a fly fishing club, anything like that. We have one of the top 15 rec centers in the country. Again, someone who likes to be outside. I know Carbondale in particular has a base camp. So it's a very similar concept to what we have at CSU. Basically, you can go and rent kayaks and canoes, all that sort of stuff for free through our rec center. Uh, we have sand volleyball courts. Um, we have four climbing walls. We have an indoor Olympic swimming pool, a lazy river. Um, so it's really, you know, for students who like to be outside, they're going to want to look for a combination of all of these facets inside the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. So I'm going to pass it to Sarah. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, okay, guys, so I'm with Northern Michigan University, and uh, for those of you that are not familiar where we're located, we're in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan. So here's a handy, nice little map that if you can find Chicago on there where the star is, we're basically six and a half hours north uh, of Chicago, straight through Wisconsin, Green Bay is kind of the midpoint, and we're three hours north of that. We're located just about four blocks away from Lake Superior. So that's a quick walk from campus to the lake. And we have direct flights from, we actually have an international airport 20 minutes away from campus and we have direct flights to O'Hare, uh, Delta and United um, are the ones that travel back and forth. Um, as an incoming freshman, you uh, can bring a car on campus. Um, so if you wanna plan on that, you can. If not, you know, that's okay. We actually, we have about 700 to 800 students um, from the Chicago land area up there on campus. And if you don't plan on bringing a car on campus, know that you probably will meet someone or know of someone who knows of someone 
that is from Chicago or even Milwaukee. And so you can get a lot closer um, back to home. Um, and if you wanna go to the next uh, slide on here. Um, yes, so when I said, you know, six and a half hours north, probably one of the first things you thought of, but doesn't it snow a lot? Isn't it cold up there? And the answer is yes to both. Um, but hopefully you're not surprised by that. Um, so, you know, but it's a totally different vibe up there. Here in Chicago, I feel like it, you know, it snows and it's kind of like chaos and traffic and all these things. Um, but up there is a totally different vibe. You can go out and have fun in the snow. Uh, temperature wise, we say there's about a 10 degree difference. So it's not so much the temperature that's different than Chicago area. I mean, winters around here can be pretty rough. Um, and my face hurts and it hurts to breathe, uh, but it's not much different up there, you know? So the snow is really what makes a difference. But, you know, we have Market Mountain 10 minutes away from campus. So you can go snowboarding, skiing. We have tons of trails all throughout Marquette, right in our backyard of campus. And you can go snowshoeing. You can, you know, take your fat tire bikes out there um, and kind of enjoy the outdoors. And when it comes to campus life, know that you can literally roll out of bed and be in class within five minutes. We do have underground tunnels and overhead skywalks connecting a lot of our buildings. So you don't necessarily have to be outside on those um, wintry days. Uh, but we're a mid-sized school. We're, we're just under 8,000 students. We're more of the personal, more of the one-on-one -on -one type of feel. So 20 to one is our student to faculty ratio. And our average class size is 28. So we'll never have a big auditorium with, you know, 500 or 300 students, definitely a little bit more low key. Um, and then um, if you happen to have labs um, or something more of the hands-on, know that those are tend to be even smaller and definitely much more of the one-on-one -on -one type of scene. Um, faculty have to have, you know, required X amount of hours where they're available on campus to our students. So know that around midterms or finals, um, you'll have access to, to our faculty if you wanted to connect with them before a big event or something like that. If you want to go to the next slide, Tiffany. Um, as far as out-of-state cost, um, our total cost for a full year, you're looking at uh, 28200 and that includes tuition and fees and room and board. Um, but for scholarships, we actually have specific scholarships for out-of-state students. So if you have a minimum of a 2.25 up to a 2.99, you'd be getting automatically $3,000 and there's no test score required with that. If you have a minimum of a 3.0 GPA, you'd automatically be getting the National Academic Awards Scholarship and that's $5,600. And both of these scholarships is what bring, helps you bring your costs from out-of-state tuition to in-state. We do have additional scholarships on top of these but these are the ones specific for out of state. They're automatically awarded. So you just apply to admissions. If you are in between these grades, you automatically get it. If you have uh, higher achieving uh, uh, grades, then you can be eligible for the Presidential Scholar Competition. And that's where we give away 10 full rides, 10 full tuition, and about 200 smaller scholarships. Um, and with that, it's a wrap of my part. I'll hand it over to Ray. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Once again, my name is Ray, your admission representative for the Southern Illinois University in beautiful Carbondale. And I'm also a proud graduate of SIU. As a matter of fact, SIU is the only school I applied to. However, I would never recommend that. It's very important that you have options. And just like Tiffany mentioned, there are literally over 4,000 colleges, universities, and you get to only pick one. Now, SIU, if you don't know this already, was founded back in 1869 as a teacher's college. And has since grown to be one of two comprehensive universities in Illinois, offering almost everything from accounting to zoology, but more importantly, it is, if you live in the Chicagoland area, Carbondale is the farthest place from home that you can get and still stay within the state. And because it's so far, the weather is usually 20 to 30 degrees warmer. We rarely, rarely get snow. Can you hit the next slide, Tiffany? 
So the Carbondale area is surrounded by beautiful lakes, parks, orchards, vineyards. So if you like the outdoors, if you're into rock climbing, camping, water skiing, skydiving, spelunking, there is so, so much to do and see there. But it's very difficult for me to describe the undescribable. So we put together a little clip for you so you can experience Carbondale. Take it away, Tiffany. There's a place where lives are meant to be lived. Sunrises are meant to be seen. Where time stands still and turns ordinary moments into memories that last forever. to describe to those who have not experienced it. The city full of energy and wonder, ready to be explored. With all the excitement of the big city and the warm welcome of the rural Midwest. We were running through the waves and you asked me for a sign. Said my love is like an ocean and it's something Surrounded by tens of thousands of acres of diverse natural beauty, from a national forest to a state park, rivers, and lakes. for any occasion. Imagine comfort and nature going so hand in hand. It's a destination unlike any other where you can do anything or by doing nothing you can experience so much. It's a place so real, so close, you can reach out and touch it. Feel the warm sun on your skin. The cool morning dew beneath your feet. There are no words for these feelings or these experiences. The nights filled with quiet moments, or the days with endless smiles. How do you describe the indescribable? Only Carbondale. Whenever you're ready to hit that next slide would be great. Did it, did it go? <laughs> I, I, I'm still seeing the video.
Okay, that's, thank you for telling me because that's not what I was seeing. I was seeing the, the okay. that. It, Is it this? It, well, if you have the slide, that would be fine. As you can see, we offer a number of different majors for outdoor tour enthusiasts, just like agriculture, agribusiness economics, ag systems and education. We also have an animal science major, which also includes an equine science, which is the only equine program in Illinois that also has a pre-veterinary track. We also have our own horse breeding center. And of course, our campus farms are within minutes of campus. We also offer crop and soil environmental management, crop breeding, genetics, biotechnology, crop production management, a very popular major now, which is fermentation science, science, also forestry, ranked number two in the nation. We were also recognized for our fifth consecutive year for our uh, forestry program as a tree campus. We also offer forest hydrology, forest recreation, park management, wildlife habitat and management, conservation, horticulture, landscape horticulture, plant soil science, plant biology, conservation biology, ecology, plant diversity, uh, recreation, outdoor leadership management, zoology, animal biology, fisheries, if you're into fisheries, wildlife biology, geography and environmental resources. SIU has a number of different majors here that you could mix and match, double major, specialized, concentrate, graduate degrees. But what I enjoy the most are the outdoor classroom opportunities. And of course, they have the best views and the international experiences, just like studying abroad in places like in Ireland, Scotland, Panama, and Germany. There's also a number of extracurricular activities, clubs, and organizations within, uh, within the, the college. But a lot of our students begin, well, at least when they're close to finishing up, as far as the jobs in this field is growing, they say that these jobs are going to continue to grow through 2026, and some of our graduates would be getting jobs in like wildlife refuge managers, hydrologists, forest management consultants, uh, urban foresters, conservation officers, game wardens, park managers, superintendent of state parks, park managers, hunter education specialists, rangers. I mean, I could go on and on and on as far as opportunities for you that are interested in these, in the outdoors. Can you hit the next slide for me? There you go. And of course, if, if you would like to explore a little bit more, please visit us at siu.edu or if you have any questions, please contact me directly at rdaz at siu.edu. Love to share with you some more about what SIU has to offer. And of course, if you'd like to follow us or share your story, please do so. Thank you for your listening. All right, guys, uh, for the sake of time, I will make this very quick. Here is a list of all of our outdoor uh, programs. Uh, just know that we offer tons of different options. And the nice thing is not only you get the theory base, so you get to learn the book stuff, but there's tons of opportunities to get the hands on simply because where we're located, we have all those natural resources available right there. Go ahead, Tiffany. You get to do cool stuff like that. And that. And, and that. that. So Colorado State University, um, we have all of the majors that we've kind of talked about uh, and then some. I highlighted some that are more unique um, than other universities. It's not as common to find. So landscape architecture is one that I wanted to touch on. Um, this is a great chance for students who really don't want to be in the classroom to get out of the classroom. Um, you know, they so you could do real estate development, you could do private, um, you could work at a golf course. I mean, there's any number of things that you could do outdoors. Um, 
environmental engineering. That's something that a lot of universities offer. So with environmental engineering, you know, it's finding solutions for environmental problems. You're going to be outside. Uh, natural resource tourism, fish and conservation biology. The important thing for someone who enjoys being outside is to find something that you are able to do outside. Of course, there's always going to be elements of sitting at a desk for every profession. Um, but some of these that we've all listed and chatted a little bit about will help get you out of the classroom and more so into nature and into the world. So I myself actually have a degree in recreation, um, but I didn't really discover how much I love to be outside until after I had graduated. Um, so I'm so thankful that I'm able to, um, you know, spend a lot of time with Colorado State. I, I go out and I recruit. So I'm, I'm really not in an office very often. Um, well, of course, right now we all are, but okay. So without further ado, we wanted to bring our students on. So students, if you guys don't mind hopping online, I'm so sorry, I can't see your beautiful faces, <laughs> but we're going to have Joe, Jacqueline, and then Alisa um, tell us a little bit about your college experience, maybe your major, what you enjoy most about the respective university you're at outdoors, and maybe any other tips that you have for students um, in their college search uh, as they're looking for outdoor elements uh, to bring into their collegiate experience. So Joe, do you wanna get us started? Yeah, thank you, Tiffany. Hi everyone, my name is Joe. I use she, her, hers pronouns. This is my second year at CSU. I am in the Agricultural Sciences College, majoring in both equine science uh, and agricultural education on the teacher development path. So that's something unique about CSU is equine science is a full on major here and it was one of the things that brought me here and it's an amazing program. Um, in both of my programs, I have classes at least once a week that bring me to one of our multiple um, ag centers off campus. So whether that's the Equine Center or ARDEC, our Agricultural Research Development and Education Center. Uh, I am always out there either working with the herd for equine science or studying livestock, livestock like cows and sheep. Um, as well as mechanics for my agricultural education major. So I'm having lots of really fun hands-on time. No matter what major you choose, here at CSU we have what's called experiential learning, which means learning by experience. So if you are an engineering major, you're going to have a ton of different labs, research opportunities, and projects that will both be built into your curriculum, as well as things that you can look out and um, go and do as an extracurricular to be hands-on with your major. Um, the College of Ag is really where my world revolves around. We have countless opportunities like our horticulture center and ARDEC for soil and crop um, or our livestock majors like animal science, as Tiffany mentioned. Um, outside of school, though, my favorite thing here in Fort Collins is we are less than an hour from Rocky Mountain National Park, my favorite place on the planet. Uh, I grew up in the city of Seattle, so I'm an out-of-state student, so all of you coming from Illinois, um, welcome. It's a really great place to move if you do decide to go out of state. Um, but growing up in the city, I knew that was not where I wanted to be. I wanted to be out in the mountains and the trees um, and specifically the Aspen. So my favorite place is the Aspen Groves at the Alluvial Fan in Rocky. Um, but if you're a hiker or a climber or a snowshoer, um, Rocky is the place for you. At CSU, you can rent gear um, for night. Uh, $25 for three month access to snowshoes and everything else, climbing gear and whatnot. Um, Tiffany mentioned our rec center. I will also plug, we have an indoor climbing wall open all year round. So when it does get a little bit too snowy, once in a while, um, and you can't go climb on actual rocks, come check us out in our indoor um, climbing wall. But I am gonna hand it over to Jacqueline. Hi, thank you, Joe. Can you all hear me okay? Um, my name is Jacqueline Lenton. Um, I'm from Northern Michigan University, obviously. I am a senior environmental science student. Um, I have a concentration in natural resources and a cluster minor in environmental justice and advocacy, um, which is a cluster minor is a special minor that the Department of Earth, Environmental and Geographic Sciences, which I'm a part of, um, allows you to create your own minor to meet your interests. So that's really cool. Um, the environmental science program is absolutely amazing. I'm from the Northern Michigan University area and uh, market area in the first place. So my goal in going to college at Northern was to get in and get out as quickly and cheaply as possible. 
um, I didn't like take a lot of these considerations into consideration when I was choosing a college, but I can honestly say in year four that I am very, very glad that I chose Northern for my environmental science career. Um, it's a very interdisciplinary science. Um, I take chem classes, biology, physics, calculus, economics, um, government, policy and regulation. I take a little bit of everything. Um, and because of that, I feel like I'm really well equipped for the job market. Um, all of my labs have been very small, probably less than 20 students in my labs. And in a matter of 10 minutes, you can be from campus to uh, an area of study, basically, wetlands, uh, inland lakes, Lake Superior is obviously huge, pine forests, um, deciduous forests, you name it, it's probably about 10 minutes away from class. So you get a really amazing hands-on experience. Um, I've had the opportunity to be waist deep in water, um, scraping the bottom of the lake for macroinvertebrates, which is totally cool, I think, as an environmental science major. Um, we have some of the oldest geological fossils in the area, and you can actually walk up there on the side of the highway, and you just walk up right there, and you get to touch them and see them and everything and study them. Uh, it's been a really amazing opportunity. And, Northern, the faculty is absolutely amazing. I, the dean of my department, you can email her and she'll probably get back to you within an hour, whether it's seven o'clock in the morning, 5 p.m. or two o'clock in the morning, she will get back to you. Um, so yeah, all in all, the faculty is amazing. The location is amazing. The program is amazing. And I'm very happy with my decision to be at Northern. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, my name is Elisa Solorzano. I'm actually um, a senior in high school. I'm very much considering SIU. I'm still in high school in Chicago. Von Steuben, it's in Albany Park. Um, and you know, I, SIU is like, you know, as far away as the city as you could get from state wise. And I think that's so great, you know, if you want to stay in state, but feel like, you know, home is so far away. Um, and, you know, Chicago's full of, you know, very hot summers, very cold winters, and, as, and Carbondale is warm all the time, rarely snow. So that's also nice. Um, you know, I just love how the variety of, there's so many possibilities at SIU considering majors or minors or extracurriculars. They're just very open and gives you many options. Um, so yeah, I like hunting, I like fishing, I like being outdoors. So just having the opportunity to be not cooped up in a classroom, not be cooped up with, you know, the hustle and bustle of the city is very, very nice to think about. Um, I would very much like to go to SIU and to have the experiences that my other peers are speaking about their colleges. I would love to experience um, college life, but as I am still in school, I can only imagine of the op wonderful opportunities that SIU will give me. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, students, for kind of giving your personal experience uh, for your um, for your during your college times and in high school, um, we do have a little, a few couple, a couple of minutes left here. So we do have one question um, from um, an attendee here, and they said they asked, "Can you talk a little bit about environmental advocacy groups on campus?" Um, I will leave this up to the students. Um, if uh, you guys kind of want to share. Um, some of the groups on campus, maybe some of them that you might be involved with or that you're aware of on campus and the things they're working on, possibly. Yeah, um, I can start if that's okay. I, I actually run an environmental advocacy group on campus called the NMU Conservation Crew, which has my, been my pride and joy for the last two years. I did not found the group. Um, I 
joined a couple months after its foundation and we went from being a group of just five dedicated students doing trail maintenance um, every Saturday to we have a following of about a thousand students on social media. Um, we have a community outreach of about 5,000 people um, via our Facebook page and we have an email list of about 700 students. And I was actually just told today that our organization is the most widely asked about in, um, in the Center for Student Enrichment. So that was really exciting for me to hear. Um, but basically what we do is a lot of boots on the ground work for the community. We do trash cleanups, um, we do trail maintenance where we go out and take care of the um, like hiking and biking trails in the area. We do ex educational workshops to teach students about living a more sustainable lifestyle. We've recently really gotten involved in the social justice movement, trying to take action to promote social justice, but also teach people about the interconnections between environmental justice, social justice, and economic justice, because you cannot have one if you don't have all three. They're all very interconnected. Um, but besides the NMU Conservation Crew, there is a group on campus called Eco Reps, and they focus more on sustainable initiatives on campus. They have um, some administrative power and they have a bigger budget. So they do a lot of work with facilities, housing and dining services, making sure that Northern is functioning as sustainable as possible. Tiffany mentioned that Colorado State University is a part of this, um, has a platinum ranking and stars. We are working right now, we have a silver ranking and eco, we had a bronze rating and eco reps, the foundation of eco reps brought us up to silver and we're hoping to get that all the way up to gold or platinum in the very near future. So those are the two big ones that are very easy to get involved in, um, but yeah. Yeah, I can jump in for CSU. So specifically for advocacy in the um, Walter Reed College of Natural Resources, we have RAMS for the Boundary Waters and Wilderness Advocacy Group, um, which does a lot of the similar things to what Jacqueline just mentioned um, from Northern. So we have similar opportunities here. If you're looking to get involved in fraternity and sorority life, we actually have three um, fraternity and sororities on campus. Um, so you can be involved in that way as well as with natural resources and or agriculture. So one co-ed fraternity that's also an honors um, is Chi Sigma Pi. And so that is, um, like I said, an honors professional um, co-ed fraternity for natural resources students. We also have Alpha Gamma Rho, which is a male only fraternity um, for agriculture students or natural resources. And then we have Sigma Alpha, which is the sorority I am a part of. Um, for um, advocating for professional women in agriculture. Um, and so if you're looking for groups that are really gonna work with you and being able to get involved in your industry, whether you're leading ag or natural resources or anywhere else, um, there are tons of groups like that. Uh, additionally, we have a capstone project for seniors in our horticulture program in the College of Agricultural Sciences, where we on campus, grow the lettuce that you will be eating in your residence dining halls um, when you're living on campus. So if you are ever in the CSU dining halls and you're making your salad like I did last year every day, it was grown right here in Fort Collins. So that was one of my favorite things because I knew that it was my peers. And so I knew that it was the best lettuce I could get on the planet. Uh, it was really exciting and it's a great way to support um, my college and you know, everyone that I really appreciate for giving me the opportunities. And um, if you know anything about agriculture and growing um, crops and livestock, transport is a really big thing when we think about the environment. And so the fact that CSU has a program that students take part of as part of their um, coursework, not even an elective or an extracurricular that minimizes transport for the thousands of students that we feed daily on campus. Um, it's a wonderful initiative that benefits more than just these students getting a chance to learn. It also benefits the Fort Collins and the greater environment. I don't believe we have any more questions at this time, um, but you know, thank you to all of you, the students. It was so great to hear from you. As always, you know, you're the, the star of the show. And Sarah and Ray, thank you so much. 
Um, and to prospective students who are listening, watching, listening later, whatever it may be, um, thanks for joining us, first and foremost. But also, um, you know, the college search, if you're really outdoorsy, that's going to be a part of your social fit. So when you're visiting the different universities, which all three of the college recruiters on here would say, please visit our campuses, make sure that you're taking an opportunity to ask the questions about what it is that you're passionate about outdoors, whether it be environmental advocacy, or if you wanted you know, a really outdoorsy related major, or if you're really looking for an active alpine ski group, I don't know, whatever it may be, um, just make sure that you're asking those questions. So thanks so much for joining. I think Strive um, uh, IACAC is gonna hop back on. Thanks guys, awesome presentation and thank you for joining us this evening. We just wanna let you know that when you close this window, there will be a quick survey. I promise it's just four questions, so a quick one. Please answer those questions for us as we wanna make sure that we get feedback regarding our program. And then there are more sessions happening all next week. If you're interested in signing up for any additional sessions, you can visit iacac.org. And then lastly, this recording will be available on that same website, I acac.org in about a week so that you can share it with any friends or family members that you'd like. So again, thank you everyone and thank you to our presenters and our students. Have a wonderful evening. Bye everybody.